Mr. Beast is silencing his critics and faking analytics in order to cover up from recent backlash. That's what some people on Twitter and YouTube are saying right now, but is it true? It's been a rough few weeks for Mr. Beast's reputation on the internet, and in this video, we'll be going through the recent major criticisms of him, including his handling of the Ava Chris Tyson situation, the Mr. Beast brand's reaction to Dog Pack's accusations, the alleged removal of negative comments, the dodging of legitimate allegations, and the alleged disaster that is the Beast Games. So we'll get into all of these in a moment. If you haven't already, I'd recommend you checking out my previous video on the Ava Chris Tyson situation before you watch this. You don't have to because I'll give a brief rundown of what's already happened, but you'll get more detail on it over there. With that said, let's begin. Okay, so Ava Chris Tyson, who you might know from Jimmy's old videos, was recently outed for having inappropriate conversations with people under 18 on Discord, for sharing leaked not safe for work pictures of Jeanette McCurdy, for allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with someone who worked for them at Mr. Beast, and for being a fan of Shadman, an artist that drew CP and Lolly, even going as far as purchasing Shadman's art. As these allegations were coming out, people such as Dogpack404, otherwise known as Dawson, as well as Jake the Viking, both of whom were former Mr. Beast employees, decided to speak out about the company and Jimmy's knowledge of what happened. Dawson, who worked at the company for about a month or so early this year, made a huge video called I Worked for Mr. Beast, He's a Fraud in which he claimed that Mr. Beast faked videos, faked contestants, faked outcomes, studied and employed psychological manipulation tactics on his child audience, and created illegal lotteries. On the other hand, Jake, who was at Mr. Beast back in the late 2010s, claimed that Jimmy knew that Ava was a groomer, and over the past few weeks in particular, has been one of Jimmy's harshest critics, feeding into an ever-growing conspiracy that Jimmy is trying to sweep critique levied against him and the company under the rug, with him noticing that the community post slapped on Jimmy's Ava response was taken down very soon after it was put up. So now seems to be a good time to dive into Jimmy's response to the Ava Chris Tyson situation. This is a topic that I briefly covered in my last video, so I'll keep it brief. Jimmy claimed here that he was opposed to what Ava did, that he had hired an independent third party to sort all of this out, and that he had fired Ava from the Mr. Beast channel and brand. Within the replies to this tweet is a barrage of people who are critical of what he had to say. From people upset that he continues to refer to Ava as a she, to others that believe that Jimmy covered this up. Some people questioned why Jimmy's response contradicted Ava's, with Jimmy saying that Ava was fired, and Ava saying that they had mutually decided Ava resign. Furthermore, some people are upset with the fact that Jimmy is doing an internal investigation, thinking that it should instead be investigated by the police. It's possible that a lot of this frustration stems from the fact that audience members want transparency, and that's a desire that's only been growing over the past week or two. It should be noted that Jimmy has seen some supports, but for this kind of statement, the fiery responses are going to be seen and liked the most. But now it's time to discuss the more conspiratorial aspect of the response, because at one point, Jimmy's statement was hit with a community note. For anyone that doesn't use Twitter, a community note is a piece of context or a correction placed underneath the original post so that people know if a fact is incorrect or if a claim is just a flat out lie. Well, this response had a community post saying that Jimmy did know what Ava was up to, because within the Discord server where Ava was allegedly having these inappropriate conversations, well, Jimmy was in there too. The messages of the server were leaked shortly after this story blew up, and people have noted that Jimmy occasionally messaged there, even sometimes participating, at one point even saying that Chris had a large schlong. However, this community post was later taken off the response. Could it be that the community post was wrong? I mean, maybe Jimmy just opened up the Discord once or twice, popped in a few messages, and never truly paid attention to what happened in it. Especially back then, Jimmy was known to work tremendously long hours and even holidays, so he might not have had the time to monitor what was happening. Or alternatively, is something else going on here? Allow me to put on a tinfoil hat for a moment. Would it be impossible for him to send someone over a message, get a few strings pulled, and have the note taken down? Keep in mind, this response was seen more than a hundred million times. 
sense. To be called out by a community note in front of this many people would be incredibly damaging. This is the kind of conspiracy that's perhaps believed by Nathan. He's another whistleblower within this saga who you might know for being one of the first of Ava Chris Tyson's alleged victims to speak out about how he felt as though he had been groomed. Within a tweet, he asked people how much they thought Jimmy had to pay for the community post to be taken down. Whether or not this was said with sincerity, or whether this was meant to be a joke, I don't know. I also don't know if this conspiracy theory actually has any credence, but the rumour has been speculated widely on Twitter. Judge it for yourself. And speaking of Mr. Beast being accused of trying to take things down, let's now discuss Dogpack404's alleged cease and desist. This is something I also briefly touched on in the first video, but around the same time that the Ava Chris Tyson allegations went public and whistleblowers came out to make their claims, Dawson, otherwise known as Dogpack404, came out to expose Jimmy for a wide range of things. As of the time of writing, his 53 minute video is now sitting at 10 million views. And while a few of his allegations have since been debunked, some of the points he made still stand, and they have not been addressed as of early August. Well, to cut a long story short, because of this video and his relentless badmouthing of the company, Mr. Beast apparently sent him a cease and desist. However, Dawson has since come out on Twitter to say that he's unafraid of it. In fact, it currently seems as though a second video is about to hit the Mr. Beast channel. By the time this video releases, it will likely be out. Okay, I'm recording this a few days later, and it's out now. Just to do a quick wrap up of what's in that, let's just have the allegations going up on screen now. Please keep in mind that these are just allegations, some of them are more substantial than others, but these were the main beats that Dawson mentioned in part 2, which I'll link in the description. I'll discuss this a little bit more later on. Dawson clearly doesn't have any concern for these cease and desists, and perhaps he has a good reason not to be afraid. Within the letter, it claims that the justification for it being sent is that Dawson had violated his non-disclosure agreement, otherwise known as an NDA. If you're not aware of them, NDAs are described as legally enforceable contracts that create a confidential relationship between a person who has sensitive information and a person who will gain access to that information. A confidential relationship means one or both parties has a duty not to share that information. So to simply explain, NDAs are very common practice in film, television and content production to make sure that spoilers and secrets aren't leaked to the public. If Dawson came out on Twitter to say that Danny DeVito for example was going to star in Mr Beast's next video and he knew that because he was working at the time when he was on set, then that would be a breach of his NDA. But if Dawson was made aware of a crime being committed on the Mr. Beast set or within the company, aka illegal lotteries or manipulating the results of a game show, he would be within his right to expose it. I would wager that if this cease and desist is legitimate, and Dawson hasn't just made this up, considering how disinterested he seems in the face of the very serious legal repercussions that he could be facing, that he would know that he's legally covered. This man is single-handedly trying to expose one of the largest social media companies in the world right now. He would know that they have plenty of money to lawyer up. But his nonchalant attitude towards very serious potential backlash is actually quite astounding to see. He's either very confident or very stupid. Perhaps both. Since Dawson's expose, his character has been attacked by a Mr. Beast employee named Chucky, who is apparently the head of the Thumbnails and Ideas team. So you can thank Chucky for this monstrosity. Chucky claimed that Dawson was fired for his erratic behaviour and that his claims were incorrect, as he was making assertions about videos that he didn't even work on. He also mentioned how Dawson was on drugs while making the video, though Dawson has since denied this claim. Chucky also claims that Dawson was paid until the 25th of June despite being fired in April, which seems quite benevolent on the part of the Mr. Beast brand if it's true. All in all, Chucky paints Dawson as completely erratic and untrustworthy, and him sharing text messages that a private investigator is now looking into him doesn't exactly help his image. At this point, it seems as though either Dawson is taking us all for a ride and stirring the pot just for the sake of chaos and infamy, or the Mr. Beast brand is actually a lot more sinister than it would seem, and might resort to hiring someone in order to dig up dirt on or intimidate the whistleblower. Or maybe whoever sent this was trolling. Who's to say? 
Either way, if this cease and desist is actually legitimate, and it definitely looks more legitimate by the day, it's not a good look for the Mr. Beast brand, as it makes it seem as though they have something to hide. And based upon what we know now from Dawson's part two, they definitely did. Now, it could be that they didn't want their trade secrets getting out there. That would be a perfectly reasonable excuse to send Dawson an NDA. But Dawson has shown in the past that he's quite aware of what his NDA is, what he's allowed to reveal, and what he's not. For example, in his interview with Ludwig, he made it clear that he would not discuss anything about videos that he specifically worked on. The yacht thing. Yeah. You, so the way I'm understanding it is you, did you work on that video or are you going off the Dude, video? You are controlled opposition. What does that mean? It means you're trying to get me to reveal confidential information and break my NDA. I don't know what your NDA is. I'm trying to ask questions about the freaking thing. Oh, you know what an NDA is. Yeah, but I don't know what your NDA covers. Okay, what should I not ask you? About any videos that I worked on. Can I know what videos you worked on so I don't ask questions about them? Um, or if no. you're okay, so then I just can't ask you anything. Within this interview, he noted that everything within his original video was just public information, but upon being asked several questions, opted to abstain from answering them as they broke his NDA. So you weren't on mushrooms, you're not trolling. And I can't ask you about the videos. Cause it's, but you talked about it in the video, so you can't talk about it. Yeah, but everything in the video is public information. So did the Mr. Beast brand actually have a leg to stand on when sending this, or was this supposed NDA just a scare tactic intending to silence Dawson? Well, I couldn't possibly say for myself, but some people have been claiming that based upon evidence found in the most recent Mr. Beast upload, it shows proof that he's trying to hide criticism and silence the critics. Another allegation made against the Mr. Beast brand is that it's currently trying to hide the fact that the tide is turning against it. If you take a look at his most recent video, Survive 100 Days in Nuclear Bunker Win $500,000, you'll see that while it's undoubtedly performed quite well, surpassing 100 million views within 48 hours of being released, it might have dropped to a very mixed response. Using the return YouTube dislikes extension, it would seem as though this video has been the recipient of roughly 2 million downvotes as of the time of me recording this. This wouldn't take it far from the top disliked videos in YouTube history. On Wikipedia, the list starts at number 42 for some reason, with 2.5 million dislikes. In comparison, his previous video, 50 YouTubers Fight for a Million Dollars, only has 293,000 dislikes according to the extension as of the time I write this. And the one before that, I built 100 houses and gave them away, has 53,000 dislikes as of the time I write this, which sounds like a lot, but is inconsequential compared to the 6.2 million likes on that video. If it can be believed, then this would be the very first time that Mr. Beast has faced anywhere near this level of backlash. Now, this is where Chucky once more comes in. If you remember, he was the one that called Dawson's character into question and tried to debunk some of the points made within Dawson's video. So Chucky came out on Twitter to claim that the 2 million figure is false and that actually there have only been 20,000 dislikes. He used what seems to be a screen recording to show that the video actually has a 99.1% like to dislike ratio, which is wildly different from the 2 million and roughly 60% like to dislike ratio alleged on the return dislikes extension. Either Chucky was blatantly lying or the return YouTube dislikes extension is insanely inaccurate. Now, if you saw my last video, then you might remember that I had a bit of criticism for Chucky in how he reacted to Dogpack's allegations against Mr. Beast. And for that reason, I don't trust him. He used red herring defenses when responding to the allegations made against the Mr. Beast brand. Essentially, Dawson alleged some pretty serious stuff, some of which were crimes. For example, altering competitions to give people unfair advantages and illegal lotteries. Chucky didn't respond to any of those, instead focusing more on Dawson's character and smaller claims made by Dawson, such as the raccoon being a paid actor. He's redirected people's attention to arguments that weren't nearly as damning, and he has been called out for it in the replies. This response has 5,000 likes. This one has 3,000, this one has 3,500. 
Perhaps this was all Chucky was legally allowed to speak on, but it's led a lot of people to be skeptical of his claims. And thus, they're skeptical that this video has actually performed better than the channel's average in terms of a like to dislike ratio, especially with such controversy coming in this past week. According to the creator of Return YouTube Dislike, the number is legitimate, with him denying the possibility that these dislikes could be botted. He additionally mentioned that he finds it tough to fathom the claim that Chucky asserted, that being that the video actually has a higher like to dislike ratio than usual. With all of these huge videos coming out about Mr. Beast, and with evidence found within Chucky's own replies that people are mad, I have to agree with the creator of Return YouTube Dislikes. I mean, the guy got ratio for this claim, man. But hey, maybe it's true. As unlikely as this seems, Chucky has put his balls out on the line for this. If this video can be confirmed to be false, if this can be confirmed to be fake in any way, then it would confirm that there has been a cover-up. And if they're trying to cover something as minuscule as this up, who knows what else they're trying to hide. There is a lot riding on the fact that this video is actually genuine. But, that aside, based upon a different piece of evidence, it's looking more and more likely that criticism of Mr. Beast is being suppressed. It's no secret that the Ava Chris Tyson situation has been huge on YouTube over the past few weeks, but given how many people have been talking about it, it's strange that not a single person has been writing about it in the comment section of his most recent video. Now, YouTube has a feature where you can block certain words and phrases from being commented. I'm using a screenshot of it because mine's full of words that would get my channel sent to the Shadow Realm if I included it. This feature is often used to avoid spam or slurs, but it seems as though Mr. Beast must have banned any and all things critical of what's been happening. The only way that you might be able to write anything about it is if you put your message all in one word, so what you write can't be picked up by the censor. And there have been plenty of examples of people doing just that. Now, why would the Mr. Beast brand do this? It could be to try and make sure that young people aren't exposed to harmful comments about the situation. Some of the comments would be people calling Ava, or even Jimmy himself, a PDF file. They might have deemed these kinds of comments as inappropriate for young children to see, and so that could be the reason. Also, there would undoubtedly be comments which some people might deem as transphobic. Jimmy is in a position where his content might not exclusively be made for kids, but a huge portion of his audience will be children under 12 years old. Banning the mentioning of Ava's name could be a way to make sure that children aren't exposed to comments that bash trans people. Or it could be more sinister than that. It could be that the Mr. Beast brand don't want parents or kids that aren't aware of the situation to find out about it, because it would be bad for business and would negatively impact the channel. They could be trying to cover up the negative press and sweep it under the rug, pretending like nothing ever happened for the uninformed. There is no war in Bar Sing Se. If you want some evidence, take a look at this video to do with YouTube interactions. If this can be believed, it seems as though this person liked dozens of comments, all of which have now been erased. Also, take a look at this chart shared by Internet Anarchist on Twitter, which shows that roughly 20,000 comments were deleted. I don't like the fact that this chart starts at 70,000. Generally, I think it's a red flag if an axis doesn't start at zero, but the point still stands. About one quarter of comments were apparently deleted. Do keep in mind though, that some critical one word comments look like they've slipped through the cracks and have hundreds or even thousands of likes. So maybe there's no moderation at all and this is all just auto censored. As with everything here, I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, but it's becoming harder and harder. Right now, it's open season for Beast on the internet, and allegations concerning the Mr. Beast brand have now spread to the mainstream media. On the 2nd of August, 2024, the New York Times came out with an article titled Willing to Die for Mr. Beast and $5 million, in which it's alleged that the contestants competing in the internet star's Beast games expected outlandish challenges and signed contracts that acknowledge risks of serious injury and even death. If you don't know, Jimmy for a long time has mentioned that he wanted to collaborate with a streaming service for his biggest stunt yet, a high production show with a huge financial backing. So you wanted to test what you do on a streaming platform, and then you tagged yeah. a bunch of streaming platforms, yeah. which I loved, because I was just imagining the the meeting rooms in those streaming platforms. Being like, Did you guys see this tweet from Mr. Beast? And the funny part but, is we're already in talks with a lot of them, so a lot yeah. of them were like, 
why'd you do that? Like, <laughs> we, we already are talking. I'm like, yeah, yeah I, just, got it. I just thought it'd be funny. And they're like, yeah, but we are already talking what? about a show. And I'm like, in the end, Amazon would take the punt. And so it's been an open secret that coming soon will be Beast Games. However, though this sounds like a match made in heaven on paper, with guaranteed views for Amazon and a higher production for Jimmy, in reality, this might just be tainted love. So what were the problems? Well, breaking this down, we have issues surrounding competition claims, food distribution, medication distribution, hygiene, and health and safety. But first, before we get into that, this New York Times article written by Madison Malone Kircher has a few smaller controversies that I want to get into. According to the article, people were under the assumption that only a thousand people were participating, when in fact, it was 2,000. Some people felt misled about their odds of winning. Also, this apparently caused logistical problems as this was more people than the staff could handle. The article goes on to say that Jimmy at one point came out of a shrine-like sculpture on a platform above the money and people. The contestants were apparently told to cheer for him. Insert whatever capitalism, proletariat slash bourgeoisie reference you want here. There was also apparently some sexism in the game when teams were formed. Physical challenges would just biologically be more suited towards males, so it seemed like some didn't want women on their team. This has been seen before in previous Mr. Beast videos. The last one I want to quickly cover was that apparently the money they collect when they leave had to then be given back. The actual money was meant to be sent a few weeks later, but as of the article being written a few weeks after this, in some cases it hadn't been sent yet. Some of these issues you might deem as unimportant, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about them. In the meantime, let's discuss some more egregious potential problems. Let's talk about food. Apparently, the contestants went long stretches, allegedly upwards of 20 hours, without being fed. And when they were fed, these meals were small portions of bland food. This article makes it seem as though bland food is new for Mr. Beast, when in reality, it isn't. However, according to the Times, contestants had not been informed that they wouldn't be fed often. The contestants also didn't have any phones or watches, so had no reasonable way of tracking the time, but estimated that they were fed both in the morning and the evening. A spokesperson for Mr. Beast denied this, saying that the contestants were fed three times a day. So giving Mr. Beast the benefit of the doubt, maybe these contestants were fed more often than they thought, but just didn't know because they didn't have access to the time. Keep in mind that not knowing the time is also quite common practice for a Mr. Beast challenge. Also, to be honest, the quality of the food shouldn't matter too much. I don't know why they've mentioned it. Again, this is common practice for a Mr. Beast challenge, but even having said that, I've seen people eat eyeballs on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here and lamb testicles on Hell's Kitchen. I'm sure the contestants knew that it wouldn't be gourmet. Withholding food for 20 hours though doesn't exactly sound like it's allowed to me if it is in fact true. Now keep in mind that I've not studied the law or anything, especially not law regarding game shows in the USA, but if the allegation is true, it doesn't exactly sound like it's up the code. But even more heinous are the disturbing allegations about contestants' medication. The article writes that several contestants said that they had not received their medication on time, including one contestant who needed insulin. Instead, they received it hours or even days after their scheduled dosing times. One contestant said that she had initially been denied the food she required to take her medication and had been told by staff members that she didn't actually need to eat. After asking repeatedly, she was given half a banana. This claim, if it's true, is indefensible. But then, the article alleges something absolutely wild. In regards to hygiene, the article states, contestants were instructed to supply the production staff with a Ziploc bag containing five days worth of undergarments, which would be distributed to contestants once the games were underway. But several contestants said they waited hours or even days to receive their clean underwear. One woman said that when she and a group of contestants who were menstruating during the event had asked the production staff about getting their underwear more quickly, she was told that it was not a medical emergency. And she recalled that a nearby member of the production staff had laughed at the woman's pleading. The production staff are repeatedly mentioned as having a poor attitude towards the contestants within this article. It seems as though they had a very lackadaisical attitude when it came to supplying contestants with basic necessities. In terms of health and safety, there were people vomiting, passing out, hyperventilating, and someone apparently left on a stretcher. The rest of the article sheds light on sleep deprivation, which if you've seen a few of Mr. Beast's videos, is also a common theme. 
However, it does corroborate another person's statement on the poor treatment of contestants. Although the article also notes that some contestants didn't care about the treatment. At the end of the day, from their perspectives, they're getting well compensated. However, this doesn't negate the fact that if these allegations are true, this treatment of contestants is wildly unethical. Forcing hungry, sleep deprived and ambitious people into challenges for a huge cash prize will likely create massive conflict. And conflict makes for good TV. That's likely what they're banking on. But if these allegations are in fact correct, there is absolutely no excuse to not be giving out medications and no excuse whatsoever to allow your contestants to run around in last week's budgie smugglers. This article matches up very closely to Jake Weddle's testimony in part 2 of Dogpack 404's Mr. Beast Expose. In case you haven't seen it, Jake Weddle, who used to work at Mr. Beast, has recently spoken out about how he was used as a guinea pig for Mr. Beast's solitary confinement video, and how it physically and mentally took a toll on him. Overall, Jake's story matches up fairly well to the times piece. People on set didn't seem to care about well-being, only caring about content, with Jake sacrificing his well-being for money like the contestants of Beast Games have. If Jake didn't just see this article and decide to regurgitate these sorts of claims, having two separate experiences match up this well adds credence to these perspectives and makes them seem more believable. But something that's not so believable though is this post from Drama Alert. On Twitter, Keemstar came out with this post saying that an internal email was leaked. Now, if we put on our conspiracy hats once again, wouldn't it be convenient if the MrBeast brand could somehow find a way to tell the masses that they've changed and they're making proactive steps to turn things around without actually addressing the concerns that people have? Well, that's what a lot of people think. Many are very suspicious of this leak. This email is also in line with what Jake Weddle and Dawson were saying in part 2 of Dawson's expose, that being that the company wasn't up to scratch when it came to employee safety. And just to circle back to part 2 of Dogpack's expose, which again I'll remind you I'll link in the description, it's alleged within this video that Mr Beast hired someone who's on the register. This person has since been revealed to be Jake the Viking's brother-in-law and he stated here that Jimmy knew. I need to tiptoe around in case the algorithm doesn't like it, but if this is true, that is insane. If it can be proven that Jimmy knew that this person was on a register, it would be tough to come back from that. And strangely enough, this was actually alluded to by Ava about a month or so ago, who posted this onto Twitter before deleting it shortly after. So it's confirmed that Ava knew, it's confirmed that Jake Weddle knew, and obviously being his half-brother, Jake the Viking also knew. But Jake the Viking also claimed that Jimmy knew, and Jake Weddle said that this was very likely. The, the likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. Considering that Ava was at one point to Jimmy's best friend, I find it tough to fathom the idea that they knew about this person being on the register and at no point ever considered talking to Jimmy about it. Considering that he's apparently not working at the company anymore, maybe they found out later and that's when he was fired, but even then you've got to consider the background checks just not being thorough enough. I've got to think that that's the only outcome that's slightly salvageable for Mr. Beast. It's clearly unambiguously inappropriate for someone who's on the register to be working at a company like Mr. Beast who make content for children. If it's revealed that Jimmy knew this entire time, then it could be the end of the Mr. Beast channel as we know it. All in all, the Mr. Beast brand has a lot to answer to. Here's hoping that we do get a response so that we can put this all to bed one way or another. I do hope I've been as non-partial as possible here, it's not been my intention to defame the brand or anything, but I do believe that when these kinds of accusations are out there it's important to address them, especially considering that a lot of the big names on YouTube probably won't. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already yet. Also, why not check out my video on the crimes of the Paul brothers next? It's a fantastic piece of content, one of my personal favourites. If you enjoyed this, then I see no reason why you wouldn't love that one too. Aside from that, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.